Good morning. My name is Reverend Kathy Macedo, and I'm part of the ministry team here at First United Methodist Church of Warren in Bristol. And I'm going to be leading you in worship this morning. The announcements are on your screen. If you were mailed a bulletin, it'll be in your bulletin. I'm going to highlight a couple of them. One very exciting announcement is that we will reopen live in-person worship in the sanctuary on May 23rd, which is Pentecost Sunday. Worship will also continue to be live streamed through our Facebook page and on YouTube. There are two lay servant courses um, by the Lay Servant Academy, it's a Zoom, they're Zoom courses, and they're um, being offered. The information is on your screen. Um, they're very, they're a lot of fun and really valuable in your uh, growth in Christ. So think about them. We'd like to thank you for continuing to support First United Methodist Church during this pandemic and this time of not meeting together. And um, also that includes its community outreach, of course. So please, if you can, send your checks to First United Methodist Church of Warren and Bristol, 25 Church Street, Morin, 02885. Thank you. for the call to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord, our rock. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus Christ, cornerstone, solid rock. Come, let us kneel at the feet of the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, cares for the sheep, knows each one by name. Good Shepherd, tender of our souls, we worship you today. Please let us join together for the opening prayer. Thank you, loving God, for bringing us to this time of worship. Refresh us and heal us again. Remind us of the many ways in which you have blessed our lives with your abundant love and your presence. Guide our hearts and our spirits that we may hear your words and our souls may be steered into active service to your people. In the name of the Good Shepherd who leads us to life, we pray, amen. <laughs> Oh, 
in our service when we would be dedicating our tithes and our offerings. And even though we're not gathered together, we will hold up in prayer those tithes and offerings which have been sent in. Oh God, you are our good shepherd. Your son, Jesus, laid down his life for all who belong to you. Thank you for nurturing our life and sustaining our faith. In gratitude, we want to help others to know your love. Open our ears to listen to your voice. Open our eyes to see our brothers and sisters in need as sheep of your flock. May our tithes and offerings give voice to Christ's love for all people. Amen. This is a time in our service when we lift up our, our joys our, um, and our prayer requests. We lift up all those who are in need of God's healing and God's love. Those who are ill physically or emotionally or spiritually. So this morning, Lift up these names to God as we enter into this time of prayer. Good and gracious God, we come before you this morning, grateful for your forgiving grace and grateful for all of the blessings which you have sent into our lives. We lay before you ourselves and our loved ones and all the people this morning who are hurt and suffering. We ask for healing and for comfort. We lift up the tragedy of all of the shootings and resultant deaths here in this country and around the world for which so many have suffered these past few months. We pray, O oh Lord, that you hold their families and their loved ones in your arms and comfort them and heal them. And we also pray that you soften the hearts and minds of those who would inflict this kind of pain. We thank you, O oh God, for the earth our home, for the wide sky, for the blessed sun, for the oceans and the streams and the towering hills and the whispering wind, for the trees and the green grass. We thank you for our senses by which we hear the song of the birds and see the splendor of the fields of golden wheat and taste the autumn's fruits. Then help us rejoice in the field of the uh, snow. I mean, in the uh, feel of the snow, in the smell of the breath of the spring flowers. Grant us a heart, open wide to all of this beauty, and save us from being so blind that we pass unseeing, even from the common thorn bush, which is now aflame with your glory. For each new dawn is filled with infinite possibilities for new beginnings and new discoveries. Life is constantly changing and renewing itself. In this new day of new beginnings with you, O Lord, all things are possible. We are restored and renewed in a joyous awakening to the wonder of our, our lives that are and are yet to be. Now let us continue this prayer with the Lord's Prayer, which Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
morning is from 1 John 3, 16 to 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth. And action. And by this we all know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive him from whatever we ask because we obey his commandment his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The Word of God for the people of God. The Gospel reading this morning is from the book of John. It's John 10, 11 through 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves, leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong in this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, oh God.
My message this morning is entitled, The Gift of Love. The hymn, which we will hear during this worship service, The Gift of Love, is based on Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, a familiar passage in which the Apostle Paul defines the love that Jesus personified. I'd like to share with you some of the words from that passage this morning. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. I had the honor of reading these verses at my nephew's wedding last Saturday, and I have also started reading them at all of the funerals for which I officiate as a tribute to the person who has died and his or her relationship with family and loved ones. We all have a different or different ways of defining love and experiencing love. And sometimes we certainly overwork or overuse the word love. We say we love ice cream. We say we love to walk in the woods. We love a certain TV show or we, we say we love something that we see, uh, an outfit that we see on somebody. Overuse diminishes the word love and I think it diminishes somewhat how very special love is. In the ancient world in which Jesus lived, there were three definitions of love. There was eros, a physical, romantic love. There was philia, which means brotherly love. And there was agape, a self-giving, self-sacrificing, unselfish love. Agape is the kind of love that Jesus has for us. Agape is the kind of love that Jesus personified. And it is the kind of love that John defines in the passage from 1 John today. He says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. And for us, laying down our lives doesn't obviously mean that we literally physically die. We can die to our own wants and needs in order to serve someone else. We willingly give up aspects of our own lives when we become parents or when we become a caretaker for a loved one. We can die to our own material desires when we share what we have with others. And very importantly, we can love because God first loved us. We know love because we have experienced it in Christ. The cross of Jesus is the supreme expression of his love for us. It is the ultimate example of one laying down his life for those he loves. Jesus was motivated by love. It was the underlying principle of of his earthly life. And the message in, of John's letter today is that Christ's followers must choose to love as a motivating, motivating life principle if we are to walk in Jesus' footsteps. If we are to share Jesus' life, we must share his love. We are asked to love the unlovable. We are asked by Christ to take a chance with love. We are asked by Jesus to love everyone, whether we agree with them or not. And there are risks, the risk of vulnerability, the risk of misunderstanding, the risk of rejection, 
but we must take a chance in order to love others. Some will reject it. Others will misuse it. But there will be those who respond to it and who experience Christ's presence through our love. Sometimes we are the only image of Christ that a person will meet in any given day. Psychiatrist Carl Menninger said, love cures. It cures those who give it and it cures those who receive it. Our society tends to tell us to hate those who offend us and to desire the worst for those who harm us. God's love, however, is completely opposite. We learn in Leviticus 19.18, do not seek revenge or bear grudges against anyone, but love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus gave us the greatest commandment of all, to love God first and a second, just as important, he said, to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we have a choice to either love as God asks and requires of us, or we can choose not to. What a woman named Mary Johnson has been able to do within her lifetime speaks volumes about unconditional love and forgiveness. In February of 1993, her 20-year-old son was shot and killed by Oshia Israel, a 16-year-old, after an argument at a party in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Originally wanting to see justice done, Mary eventually turned her anger into compassion. Now she and Israel are next door neighbors. Today, she counsels mothers of murdered children while he visits prisons and churches and shares about the importance of forgiveness and reconciliation. Mary Johnson received an extraordinary gift of love in her life, as did Oshia Israel. It is the gift of love when we put our lives on hold to care for a dying parent or to care for a sibling or a friend. It is a gift of love when we selfishly give ourselves to serve another. It is a gift of love when someone loves us in this unselfish and self-sacrificial way. We all have received the gift of love in our lives. The source of that gift is God through Christ. And God uses people to bring gifts into our lives. It is different for each of us. It may be one extraordinary gift of love that you have experienced, or you may have had many examples in your lives. What gift of love have you received? Think about that for a few minutes this morning. Share your thoughts with a family member or a friend. And if you're alone today, send someone an email or a text or make a phone call. But think about God's gift of love in your lives. God gives us creation as a gift of love. Earth Day was April 22nd. We are called to partner with God in the stewardship of all creation. We certainly hear the voice of God through the natural world. And if we do not take seriously hearing God through the world around us, then if we are to take seriously hearing God through the world around us, then we need to take care of that world. Listen to God's voice in your heart. Listen for God's voice on how to love and how to love this earth. And listen for God's guidance in every aspect of your lives. As the last verse of the hymn, The Gift of Love, tells us, Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are freed. Amen.
the benediction. Go now with your trust in the Good Shepherd and let us love not just with words but in truth in action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. And may God be at your side even in the valleys of death. May Christ Jesus, be the cornerstone of your life. And may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you in love and mercy all the days of your life. We go now in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.